Unfortunately, what you're about to hear is real. The members of this radio program are simply not that bright. Or what some people would call educated. They are merely stupid. They're not trying to offend anyone on purpose. And all have played doctors on TV. You have been warned and are cordially invited to join the party. This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Get, 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 get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kicks, Bill. The trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. You know what they say, shake your radio more than three times, and you're playing with it. You're listening to The Men's Room. Wow! <laughs> right away we go, welcome to show number 2,875. Along with Steve the Throw Hill. <whistles> the Ted Smith, <whistles> Lovin' Fox, <laughs> and my cock. Montgomery! in the men's room. On tap today, who sucks less? The word goes tomato, tomato. Get ready to play profile this. Plus headlines, the men's room shot of the day, fun listener emails, and everyone's favorite, TV time with Ted. Click, clack, drink to draw. All right, here we go. We get down to Asian Hunt, Maryland, where a very drunk woman jumps off a bridge. Meanwhile, a Michigan man gets bitten by his pet cobra, but has no anti-venom in his fridge. In Idaho, police now ticketing drivers for going slow in the passing lane. The U.S. Embassy in London needs someone to buy a million dollars in toilet paper as your taxpayer money goes down the drain. And a Massachusetts town's entire police force quits. That is all coming on today's very special episode of The Men's Room. And now, here's the question. Hola, bitches. Good day to you and yours. All right, the owners of Stella Marina Bar, that would be in New Jersey, they're upset at a pair of customers who dared show the video of the live parasitic worm that slithered out of the cod that, yes, they'd already been eating. I saw the video, pretty disturbing. Meanwhile, in Wisconsin, a man had both of his hands and both of his legs amputated. Naturally, the question is why. Honest to God, because a dog licked him. It could have been his own dog or one of the other eight dogs he had been in contact with. I'm not joking. It turns out a dog licked him and gave him, well, basically put him in the septic shock. And by the way, maybe you don't want to know this, but they say three out of four dogs or 75% of them, yeah, they have that particular bacteria in their mouths. Like three out of four times, you know, you get a shot. Uh, anyway, that's what he discovered, and they had to amputate. Now, <clears throat> You might remember back in 2015, Chipotle restaurant, they were the center of an 11-state E. coli outbreak. It was not good for business, obviously. Well, guess what? On National Guacamole Day, Chipotle, yeah, things went south again. This time, uh, a couple of people now say they may have gotten some kind of airborne, parasitic, something or other, foodborne illness. I don't know, but it's happening again. And Chipotle is not alone, both Trader Joe's and Kroger. They're issuing recalls of some salads and wraps. Because of concerns over parasites. I don't care who you are. Parasites skeeves me out, man. They just do. It can be in your food. It doesn't matter. If you say the word parasite, I'm out of the picture. But that's what we want to talk about today. Just the idea of worms in your food, etc. You know that feeling you get when you think of it? It's the heebie-jeebies. That's what the heebie-jeebies is. And today's question is, what was it that gave you... The heebie-jeebies. Be a part of the big show call 844-999-OLA. You can like the Men's Room on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Men's Room Live. And send those emails to the Men's Room at mensroomlive.com. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. We return to the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. Oh, the show is in. Away we go. Welcome to show number 2,875. What a large and charge program we have for you today. The exciting return of Who Sucks Less. As far as Who Sucks Less, uh, Steve, you bring us three stories every week from the news. All of these stories suck. It mm-hmm. is up to us to figure out which of the three stories suck the least as far as the stories are concerned. How are we sitting this week? Uh, you're going to be disappointed in all of these stories. You're going to be angry at me. It's not my fault. I just found three stories where there's there's kind of a, a, a common thread through all three. Okay. All right. As far as... Uh, how bad's the thread? Dude, it's just... Is it the worst thread? No. All well, right. it depends what you think the worst is. I don't know. 
Uh, as far as uh, what is it, uh, Ted? What's the what is the worst that it could be? I'd say Catholic Church, Penn State. No, all right, it is not, not that. that. But it's not. We good. moved on to Ohio State. Where have you been? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Give the come on, give the rest. State. I mean, I even Penn State's like, come on, man. Give the rest of the big. There's been others there. Sure, you know what I mean. Uh, the word goes uh, to well, how you say certain things. Do you say Caribbean? Do you say uh, Caribbean? Caribbean? Uh, in the world of food, there's a, a few of those. Like caramel. Do you, do you say almond or do you say almond caramel caramel? So we're gonna go with the tomato uh, tomato version Pistachio. of how you say stuff on. <laughs> On the Page. word coming up, depending on where you are <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and how you say it. So, so crick. Gonna, and we'll drink and tell us with a shot of the day. Yeah, crick. What else? Uh, oh, you know, man. Uh, here's the one that here's <laughs> which the one, I don't say. Everyone, everyone that I know uh, from uh, from from in my area in West Virginia. If you say Coors, like I love, uh, I like Coors Light. Right. All right. The C turns into a Q. So cures? the way they say, yeah, it's Coors. <laughs> oh, I'm a, cheers all. I am a cheers. <laughs> Give me one of them cheer lights. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Just like Jesus Christ. <laughs> Just depends on where you are, right? Uh, yeah, shout out to coming up. Another round of Profile This. And today we talk about the heebie jeebies, which is actually a term. And Steve spelled it correctly when we went to do the question, which I was. I don't know amazing, why you didn't believe me. Based on the fact that I didn't know if that was a real term or not, but it goes back. I didn't know if it was. When you asked me, uh, spell it any way you want. It goes back to the 1920s. It's one of those old, you know. Heebie jeebies. Yeah. Heebie jeebies. Like mumbo jumbo. Like, Hocus pocus. Right. Yeah, we it did a little really research. Does. Yeah, we did to find out what the heebie jeebies are. She's not in here, fella. The heebie jeebies. That damn the heebie jeebies. Are so don't you, give me uh, that mumbo jumbo. Is, is the feeling of anxiety over a situation or a person? Yeah. So, right. in other words, if you're feeling like, oh, God, that person, there's something just about them that, man, I, I don't know. The heebie jeebies. Those are the heebie jeebies. You know? Mercy. If you've got maggots that are crawling around in your trash bag in the sun and the. <sighs> Trash stinks. That might give you the heebie-jeebies too. There's all kinds of keep ways going, Miles. To get the, yeah. What else gives people the heebie-jeebies? Put the hair on your uh, oh, oh, on keep your it arms to stand up. Oh, There's man. a rabbit squirrel <laughs> yeah, exactly. in your attic, uh, yeah. and he's hissing at you. Heebie-jeebies. Heebie-jeebies. Somebody sneezes, yeah. and the bugger hits your hand, oh. <laughs> and it's, it's not a color you can identify in nature. When someone's talking to you, and you see the spit fly out of their mouth, <laughs> and it's coming right at you, and you can't move, it hits you right in the face. Right. Like, ah! And you try to subtly act like it didn't happen, and then right. you go, no, I just got to wipe it. And then you know, because you did it, and now you have to apologize. Is it worse than the eye or the lip? Do you apologize? That's always my question. I think you question. apologize. Well, because yeah, I'll man. wipe it, but it's uncomfortable for both of us. I think you got to wipe it. You don't have to apologize. We both know you just spit on it. I think you got to wipe on it, wipe it like someone who hits the wall, splatters, and then slowly falls down. Like, you got to go like, ah, oh, <laughs> oh, like you spit on me. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> you ever just exhale? Or maybe you're sweating. <laughs> Some flies. Oh, yeah. 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 That is the worst. Uh, yeah. I had a chick with a snot rocket once uh, playing music on the stage. And it felt bad, man. Jumping around and I feel it leave my nose, right? But like Is it I, tumbling over like <laughs> Yes. Exactly what you picture, but I see it in the light on the stage, right? And <laughs> like a big this, wacky wall crawler well, right, but coming right at her. This woman is looking up and I don't know if she knows that it hit her, but it, I know for a fact that it did. And as soon as it hit her, man, I just kinda walked to the other side of the stage, like, all right, let's just keep playing over here. Yeah. It was a bad feeling, man. So if it was you, I apologize. Some heebie-jeebies going around. Uh, this is from the Washington Post, and the uh, it, and this is the the headline of the uh, of the article in the food section. It says restaurant berates irresponsible reaction of man who shared video of a worm in his food. How dare he? I mean, goddamn. I mean, like, <laughs> there's a worm. Yeah, that's in the living. food that you serve. Like, why is that irresponsible? Uh, ir- irresponsible reaction. I think that's a. I thank you uh, for sharing right. that. So uh, maybe I won't go there. You know, they were already eating their food. Golly, and he's he's showing the video, and yeah. the worm is moving. We've this heard of this. thing is very alive. The problem is, the... too, it's a piece of fish. Right. So at first, it just looks like a fish bone. Right. But at it moves. First. But how do you cook fish thorough, thoroughly all the way through it? It's it, And then somehow, like, a worm's still, like, dancing in there alive. Like, woohoo! Like, I'm alive. Like, how come he didn't cook, too? You know what I, I'm saying? It's a Jersey worm. I don't tough. know. Well, a family me, just getting the day. A family was dead. Hey, I'm, still alive. Hey, I'm hey. a tape worm. It's me, Jersey worm. Two things I don't do: I don't die, and I don't snitch. Right. I'll measure the inseam of your slacks, right. though. Oh, yeah. but I'm getting into that belly of yours. Who are? Well, you've heard about this. You got a great ass. 
Sam told me. And I say that from the inside. Sam told me my job was to get inside of you. (laughs) Rolling, colon, rolling. (laughs) A family dining at a seaside restaurant on the New Jersey coast got an unpleasant (laughs) surprise (laughs) when they said a live worm slithered out of their food. I mean, are they eating a seaside? Jim (laughs) Guinea. You think I was dead? Jim Guinea. Oh, no. Oh. Jim, Jimmy Guinea. That's not his name. His name is Jimmy Guinea. <laughs> Guinea? Guinea or Guinea? G U I N E E. Come on, man. Guinea or Guinea? G U I N E E. Given that area of the country, there's no way he's going by Guinea. Jimmy Guinea. We're calling him Jimmy Gimme. He can't hear us. From uh, from Middletown. Could it be Juini? Juini? Is, is it Juini? Is that how you say it? I don't know. Just you're, making a, a, you're making it worse. Just to put a better spin uh, Jimmy on it. Juini. Juini is not a better <laughs> spin, dude. Jimmy Juini. Hey, Jimmy, bring that Juini over here. He was... Uh, he was hey! <laughs> he's from... I'm a Juini worm. <laughs> Juini. Nobody does this to Jimmy Juini. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, he posted the video to Facebook, which uh, he said showed the creature confirmed by an expert as a likely parasitic roundworm. That's right, crawling out of a piece of his cod <laughs> that his girlfriend Jenny Morzano. Oh, oh Jenny, I'm so sorry. Hey, yo, baby, Jenny, what's in my food? Hey, Jenny, we're. Uh, they were at the Stella hey, Marine. Jenny doesn't like a fish. There's a talking tape one. Come here for a minute. You need to see this. <laughs> oh, things will make this okay. It's five Jager bombs. <laughs> <laughs> and one of them hats. Give me a hat. I want a free hat of the place. Yeah, the pink one. <laughs> yeah. And she wants a, t- t- a T-shirt. Uh, Stella Marina Bar and Restaurant in Ashbury uh, Park. Uh, they were celebrating his aunt's 80th birthday. <laughs> oh, that's birthday. where the boss is from. They were there for, uh, they were there for a birthday party for, Ma- for me, Ma. Hey, you do this to the boss. They this- would do that to Springsteen, I guarantee you. In the video... Uh, show the tape on Hey, hey, that'd be an honor to get in this cold. <laughs> the video shows the pink colored critter uh, wiggling on the plate. It's so gross, man. That is a live worm that just crawled out of the food. Said, hey! Hey, quote, dinner has come to life. <laughs> hey, that's a good one. Quote, dinner has come to life. <laughs> the restaurant's a humor about it. <laughs> the restaurant could not be reached for uh, comment. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> what's a comment going to be? We generally don't do this. <laughs> They kind of say that. (laughs) They say that they have stopped uh, serving the dish while appearing to criticize uh, Guinea after he called attention to the problem. (laughs) Guinea said his girlfriend who had eaten about half attention (laughs) to a live worm in his food. He said who he had. He uh, he said his girlfriend who had eaten about half a cod at dinner was cutting around. Oh, Vinny, I already ate half of it. Was cutting around some of the skin on the fish when the guy just popped out of the food. She was shocked. She wasn't sure what it is. Had never encountered anything like a live parasite in a food before. <laughs> Janice at the restaurant compensated them and that he held no Here's ill will. Here's five Jager bombs. Towards the <laughs> right. Hey, I gave you Basically. two pre-cats. But he, he did post a video on Facebook and he tagged the restaurant in an attempt to warn others well, uh, sure. about the possibility of parasitic worms. Uh, but the negative attention prompted the restaurant to push back. In a Facebook post about the incident, the restaurant said it takes every precaution while preparing and cooking meals for the public. Uh, with that being said, one of our seafood purveyors uh, did send us Saturday's cod and missed the small worms that were found by not one but two of our guests located in the center of their fish. We immediately halted serving the dish. We also compensated the family of eight generously. Generously, seven Jagerbots and express. You know what? We'll throw in some Sambuca. And one for the five-year-old. Make it eight. <laughs> we apologize that one of our guests had anything less than an amazing experience. It's a voucher for some pork roll in our restaurant. Oh, then the restaurant called out Guinea, who happens to be who's Jimmy Guinea? He's a freaking attorney. Hey, he's an attorney, Esquire. Oh. Right, who does he represent? I am very an attorney like Tom. Very Hayden. surprised that the callousness. I represented Tom Knuckles. An irresponsible reaction of the attorney of law to attempt to destroy our wonderful reputation and possibly livelihoods due to something that could have happened to anyone, whether <laughs> cooking here at home or in a restaurant. Guinea said he, uh, in turn, was surprised by the restaurant's response. If I were a plumber, would they have attacked me as a callous plumber? 
It seemed like they were trying to divert attention rather than address the issue. You got worms in your food. So here's... Uh, and they're still alive. The director of clinical parasitol... Oh, Jesus. Parasitology Laboratory. Also Boy, known as the life of the party. I let's did, just say. This guy's getting <laughs> ass. Bobby Pritt said the worm is almost... Hey, Bobby. Bobby, you know, the worm guy. The worm mayo guy. A parasitic roundworm that feeds on fish and marine mammals, and when ingested alive by humans, oh boy, can bring lots of diseases. That's the plan! It looks like uh, they're eating cod, which would have been the source of the worm, Pritt wrote in an email. Uh, oh boy. Uh, Anasicids are commonly called cod worms because mm. they are frequently found in cod. I'm eating the cod worm. Though Pritt added that the worms can also be found in salmon, mackerel, and other fish. They are unfortunately a fact of life. That's why Pritt said that it is essential that fish. Be prepared properly to kill any worms that are present. No matter yeah, how. Yeah, we didn't do that this time. Mm -hmm. Sorry. As the United uh, Nations Food and Agriculture Organization states, parasitic roundworms are common in fish. No matter how carefully fish is inspected by processors, caterers, retailers, some worms will occasionally be discovered in fish by the consumer. It should therefore be emphasized that the presence of worms in fish uh, offered for sale does not imply carelessness or bad practice on the part of the processor or retailer. Given that there was a live worm in the fish, it is safe to say that the fish had not been fully cooked, thus allowing the worm to surprise. That's what, that was the conversation we were having earlier. Well, I mean, we just right. got a tag. Yeah, so it does have something to do with the preparation. I mean, ultimately, yes, you might miss the worm. Right. But if you're fish is prepared correctly, and you're not serving sashimi sa sushi. Well, I mean, that's not why you cook anything like that. Yeah. Like chicken. You say, listen, essentially, I'm just going to heat it up till the salmonella dies. That's how you cook chicken. There's no other reason you cook it that way. Other otherwise, you'd eat chicken yeah. ceviche, right? Yeah, and sashimi Atlantic cod does not sound seem... Would you order that? No. Here, yeah. Here you, go. Uh, here you go. Here you go. The CDC <laughs> states that when people ingest larvae from raw or undercooked mm. infected fish, the parasite can travel to the person's gut. The CDC added that some people experience a tingling sensation oh. after a while <laughs> eating raw, undercooked fish or squid. This is actually the worm moving in the mouth or throat. Oh. These people can often extract the worm manually from their mouth or cough up the worm and prevent infection. Betty, grab your chopsticks <laughs> and pull up the worm Give on the worm throat. Heimlich. <laughs> also, some people experience vomiting as a symptom Good. and can often expel the worm from their body that way. Other symptoms include abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting, diarrhea, sometimes with blood in the stool. It's a pretty gross <sighs> experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Remember the story about the guy who ate raw fish almost every day, and then a five foot long tapeworm emerged from his Correct. starfish, and he saw it when he was yeah. looking down. He went, Oh, man. And he pulled the thing and yanked it. Yeah. And it was like a clown scarf. Right. It was five feet long by the time it was all said and done. I mean, the guy lost like 25, 30 pounds. He thought he was sick. It's a diet plan. Unbelievable. What uh, What was it that gave you the heebie jeebies 844 999 Ola? Hello, Taylor. Welcome to the men's room. Liquor and whores. Liquor and whores. All right, so uh, I had this. He was a buddy, and then we found out he was kind of crazy, um, and you'll find out why. Uh, we were all experimenting with magic mushrooms, mm -hmm. uh, and he really liked them a lot more than we did. <laughs> and uh, he was living in his parents' garage, and... He was there, like, the whole weekend just taking mushrooms, and he managed to pull off all of his fingernails and toenails. Ah! Oh, God. Oh, how'd he do that? Um, he, he said at first he was just picking at them because they itched, <laughs> and then it, it started to, like, itch more and kind of feel good, so he took pliers and just was, like, oh, piecing my them out. God damn, man. Uh, yeah, when I'm he, sweating. when he, when he came down from his mushroom high, uh, and realized he had no more fingernails or toenails, what is his reaction then? Oh, he, he laughed. Um, uh, like I said, he's a weird, he's a weird guy. <laughs> the kind of, like kind of person that throws rocks at you, in, you know? Oh yeah. No, that's, that's I weird. don't know I, that kind of, not that I call a friend. Do, 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 <laughs> No, the I, last kid to throw a rock at me, like, we knew we hated each other. I don't think I've had friends that, you know. I'm with you. I, I remember being a kid, somebody threw rocks at me and we got in a, Fight. Right, yeah, like, I knew we weren't friends. Let's take out an eye here. Right. That's no. He's throwing rocks anyhow. So what is this guy up to now, man? Um, we lost contact with him, but, like, I see him every once in a while on social media. He, as far as I can tell, still has his fingernails, but, uh, 
Yeah. Well, well, hopefully he just stopped taking that many mushrooms. Uh, yeah, honestly, but he didn't he, stop he taking said mushrooms. something like he was. He didn't stop taking them. No, really. no chance. Wait, how how long ago was this? Oh, uh, probably six, seven years ago. Okay, uh, he, he may have dialed back by mm-hmm. now. Uh, I figured it was well, like, dialed, but I'm just saying like. It's going to go one of two ways. It's going to go over to the top, or it's going to be, yeah, you're going to have to. Because I, it's, there's some people experiment, have a good time, uh, every once in a while go out. But uh, they move with linear time forward. But there are some people who they go, get trapped, who go all in, man. And I know a few of those guys who went all in for years and years and years, and they are. They're still there. They're still there, man. They're, they're still there. Like You're like, yeah, 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 man. <laughs> you're like, all right, what do you want to Yo, you know, man, stuff. Like, what is that? Like, yeah, well, man, you know. No, I don't know. What are you up to, man? Like, oh, yeah, man, just hang it. <laughs> right, like, yeah, that's like, it. What are you doing? Follow. Oh, yeah, no, just, you know, same old, man, same old. Like, like I haven't seen you in 12 I, years. I know, I it's actually answer. been 10, you know what I mean? Right. Like, oh, how you been, man? He's like, oh, man, yeah, it's freaking great, man, yeah. <laughs> What's, well, any, anything new? How's your mom? Oh, yeah, she's great, yeah. It's run, been 1974 run, run, how's, how's, that guy. How's, how's Bob doing? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, man, he's great. Yeah, man, he's, he's doing good, yeah, yeah. Died last year, you know. Hey, hey. oh yeah, that was Kimber. Tony died. Yeah, hey, yes, Kimber. Uh. What was it uh, that gave you the heebie-jeebies? Eight four four nine nine nine. Ola Moore, your calls coming up. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. Ola, bitches, you're listening to the Men's Room. Wisconsin man has lost his hands and his legs after he likely received the lick of death from a dog. People Magazine reports, per a GoFundMe created by Greg Mantufel, the 48-year-old house painter from West Bend, he started feeling sick on June 27th. He and his family initially thought he had the flu. His symptoms soon worsened, however, and his wife Dawn rushed him to the emergency room where they noticed that his body was covered in bruises like someone beat him up, quote, with a baseball bat. She said blood tests soon revealed the cause. Mantufel had gone into septic shock from the Capnostophaga canemorosis bacteria. And I nailed that. Which Life Science notes is found in the mouths of nearly three quarters of dogs and 57% of cats. Though the animals themselves don't get sick from it, humans, however, the bacteria can cause a blood infection or sepsis, uh, which can lead to organ failure and even sepsis. Sepsis. Say they so. Sepsis is correct. Doctors had to amputate uh, Mantufel's legs and his knees. He also lost his hands and his nose has to be reconstructed. Jesus. He told doctors, do what you have to do to keep me alive. Uh, Dawn Mantufel tells the Washington Post uh, that she had say, they don't know which dog infected her husband. They counted eight dogs he'd been around at the time he fell sick, including his own. Uh, they're going to have to sell their house and look for a one-story home now. And he will no longer be able to work as a house painter. Or cruise on his Harley. Uh, still, uh, there's no negativity from him so far. Uh, the medical center at the College of Wisconsin basically said what happened to him was a fluke. And that more than 99% of people who have dogs will never have this issue. Uh, so far, the GoFundMe page has raised more than $28,000 for Damn. his recovery. Because a dog licked him. Our question, what was it that gave you the heebie-jeebies? 844-999-OLA. Hello, Franklin. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. How's it going, guys? Doing well, sir. Um, so what gave me the heebie-jeebies is I used to work at a, uh, like a shop out in the middle of nowhere in Colorado that built burner stacks for oil refineries. Okay. That and, is a uh, sexy sounding job. I, I got to be honest with you. Uh, well, thank you. <laughs> what do the girls say when you tell them that at the bar? Uh, let me give you my panties. Yeah, I bet they do. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. my God. You could probably give me so many hookups. Hand them over. Uh, but, uh, Can you get free gas? Anyways, so, so I used to roll the plate for the burner stacks. And after I was done rolling the plate, you know, the fitters and the welders and all that stuff, they would they would fit it up, and then I would do QC after they would fit it up. And in that meantime, I would clean the shop up, and we we worked right next to a uh, dairy farm that uh, they they had like a deal with my work that they had these little milk bottles, like the small ones that you get, you know, for like at gas stations and whatnot. Okay. Um, <clears throat> if you filled up this um, this bucket, it was like a fifty five gallon drum. You filled it up with the leftover containers, they would give you 
uh, uh, the equivalent for free just because we work so close to them. All right, so you got 55 gallons of milk in exchange for, what, 55-gallon containers, basically? So would you go around and sell milk out of the back of your van? <laughs> hey! No, 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 no. They, they, they bought the, the milk, like the small ones, and then they put them in the container, and then the farm that produced the milk, like, took it in, and they gave us the milk back. Like, they would send okay, us okay. milk. Okay, okay, all right. So what, was, what, what was it they gave you, the heebie-jeebies? Um, okay, so... We had forgotten about um, one that was around the corner of one of the shops for a couple months. And they were kind of like, they weren't clear containers, but they were kind of cloudy. And there was like a black substance like halfway up the container. And I went to uh, lift it up with the forklift and it fell over. And, you know, like the sound of like a like a really wet towel, like dropping on concrete. Mm hmm. That's what it was, and what it, and because it had felt it had fallen over, and um, when it did that, like it was all that black substance was all dead flies and like old milk and stuff oh. like that. Oh, ah, oh. yeah. How bad did it yeah. smell? Oh, it it smelled so bad I threw up. I mean, as soon as the smell hit my face, I <laughs> I leaned over and said, threw up. Well, there is and a, dead there flies and spoiled there milk. There is there is a trigger on a smell that is that oh, yeah. bad that is documented that will make you immediately gag and throw up. I would think that oh, a yeah. a sludge of dead flies and spoiled milk would do that. You yep, would have to yep, think that's so. what it that's what it did. Okay, so, yeah, good times. So I don't envy you. Heebie jeebies. Yeah, yeah, I bet it did. Mm-hmm. I bet we it traded did. milk. Bad mm. idea. What was it that uh, gave you the heebie-jeebies? Eight four four nine 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 Ola. Yeah, when you say it like that, <clears throat> it sounds kind of bad. We traded milk. Oh, what about when you no, take? But it? if I was getting a hookup on milk, I'd be pumped. Sure, uh, it's milk, and oh, I almost cuss. Stuff is expensive. As a kid, you know, you don't realize when you go to other people's homes and your families uh, that uh, it just used to be, especially with my grandmother. I go to her house. And if I, as a kid, if I'm 10 years old and I want a glass of milk, I know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the refrigerator. I'm going to get milk and I'm going to drink it. Well, my, like anything else, my grandmother had four things of milk in there. And one of them was inevitably bad to the point of it was just, <laughs> right, you know, like, right. and she never threw mm-hmm. anything away. So when I would go in there, I mean, I can remember just taking a big swig oh. off, off a milk jug, man, and just getting hit with curdled milk <laughs> and just lumps of <laughs> drinking just nasty ass cottage cheese and immediately blowing chunks immediately and like and like and, I, and like as a kid you don't think to look at the expiration dates on stuff because you figure most yeah, adult milk. most adults would have taken care of would have taken care of that but you know like you look in the back of the refrigerator and there's just something green in there man and you know you know it's not a vegetable yeah and it will never be cleaned there's out. a tub of salsa i'm thinking about right now in mine what uh what was it that gave you the heebie-jeebies 844-999 ola Hola! The shenanigans continue on the Men's Room Radio Network.